Um, at the height of my career, after, by the way, just for context, I got much worse at investing, but my first three investments were Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. So I'm in that, I'm friends with Zucks, friends with Travis from Uber, um, on, you know, Crush It just came out and it's killing. Um, everything's going great. And in the middle, and this is 2009, it's all about to happen. I'm at the height, I'm one of the 20 most followed people on Twitter and Twitter's just starting to matter. Me and my brother start a client service business. A client service business. Something that is really at the lowest end of admiral startups, right? Just a eight times EBITDA business. Like a not super sexy, like eat shit from clients all day, right? And so, so this is not me post gaming or Monday morning quarterback. This is me telling you what I've been doing with my behavior. While all this was available to me, nobody could have raised more money than me in 2009 and 10. I'm right there at the top of it. All that, I had already built a $65 million business. I'm at the top of my game and I took four steps back, including being ridiculed and made fun of by my internet famous friends. I went and built VaynerMedia. AJ, even to, you know, didn't love it because all his friends were millionaires on paper joining Path and, you know, and Dig and Reddit and all this stuff. And we kind of struggled with it for the first two years because it was hard. It was a big humble pie that I had to eat. I had to go into brand manager meetings and it was crazy for where I was in my career. But I was self-aware to know what I was capable of building that would be successful. And in the 48 months since I've really run it, it's been alive for six years, I've grown that company from 30 to 650 employees, from three to 100 million dollars in revenue, right? And not pass through revenue of media, like we do 100 million, right? And in current 2.5 to three time revenue valuations for agencies, it's a 250 to 300 million dollar valuation with a business that's gonna kick 17 million dollars in profit this year. That me and my brother and my partner, right? And that one you can clap because that was real execution in the face of a lot of sexy other things to do. In the face of, and I wasn't a kid, I'd already made it and I still went practical. The level of practicality, the level of self-awareness, the level of patience, the level of humility, the level of empathy to the market and gratitude for your opportunities and the level of understanding what's happening in the macro and microeconomic climate in our space is shit. And it's about to hit the fan and so I highly recommend if you take anything from my talk tonight, I would ask you to do one thing. Start the process of becoming much more honest with yourself. It will help you make much better decisions and it will help you in the long run. It may not taste as fun or as glamorous in the short term, but it will put you in a much better position. Because something I've learned, as this has become more obvious to me in the last year, as I started doing the Ask Gary Vee show and started giving more EQ, more self-awareness, more of those kind of talks, and as I wrote this book, I started realizing, huh, I started asking more questions. And when, because I was so isolated from Silicon Valley, when I built my Web 1.0 company, started talking to a lot of my 40 and 50 year old friends at these companies, at GE, at Procter & Gamble, at Fox News, at Turner, at Toyota, at all my big clients, Fortune 500. And you know what I realized? Holy shit, a lot of these 40 and 50 year old friends of mine, they were all worth millions of dollars in 1999 on paper in Silicon Valley. Because the next wave of what we just lived through is a lot of people getting jobs. And so, you can either right now with my advice, if you believe me, for the three of you in here, <laughs> you can either take your business and start becoming practical with it and try to build a business that makes money instead of trying to position it for your next round or you could start dusting off your resume and trying to get the best first jobs that are about to become available as all this shit is gonna hit the fan because I promise you, it is. And so I'm not here to doomsday, I'm here to go practical. And the level of practicality in our space is grossly missing. And so I, I hope you heed that. Now, at the same token, let me go crazy optimistic on you. In this is why this is the most interesting time in my career. In parallel, this is not 1999 and 2000 when the internet wasn't ready and wasn't at scale and it wasn't just yet there yet. This is at a time where you can build something that can go from zero to 100 million users in 18 months because we're at full scale. We're at mobile revolution. So with all this talk of me telling you like, you suck and shit's about to hit the fan, in parallel, there may be three people in here that are poised because I promise you, Airbnb 
and Uber and companies like that and even potentially, hopefully I'm an investor, Drizzly and things like that, these are the previews. They're not anomalies. So in parallel to 98% joker land fake entrepreneur, everybody thinks they're one, in parallel, there's gonna be an enormous amount of companies in the next 24 months, maybe more than in the last 24 months, that go on to become the Slacks and the Ubers of the world because there's so much opportunity, because Andreessen's right, software is absolutely eating up the world and every single thing that we are, as humans are inefficient at will be closed the gap by technology. So it's an interesting place, you know, I have a, a lot, I'm about to close a very large fund <clears throat> and probably a $100 million fund, it's gonna be funny for me to deploy capital during this because I know so many people are posers, but I also know that there's gonna be so many opportunities for big businesses to be built. And so I think we're sitting in a very interesting time. And I think the, the reason I decided to put the word self-awareness as one of the key title parts of this book is I think we start having a very important conversation of self-awareness because there is another part, and I'll open up Q&A, to this self-awareness thing. The dirty little secret about our world that is not being talked enough about is depression and suicide. My friends, in a world where everybody is cheering when you get a series A or B check, which means you've just given up a piece of your business, by the way, um, and in a world where everybody's gonna crush it and everybody's gonna win, there are a lot of people, especially when they were built to be good students and be good number fours and sevens, that when they go to be a one, and after a life full of winning, because they understood that system, they go into the actual marketplace. No more rich friends and families and connections in private school and good universities. No, real shit, the fucking game. Nobody gives a fuck who your dad is. That game, when they go to that game and they lose, it's tough. And if we keep telling everybody that it's so easy to do it, and if we don't start talking about that the entry level to be in the top 1% earners in America is only $400,000 a year. And they use the word only because nobody here is even in the mindset of million dollar or bust, right? We need to start having proper conversations. If we don't start talking about 95 plus percent of your startups will fail. If we don't do that, then we're really doing disservice to the people that join the greatest thing in the world, in my opinion, which is capitalism, entrepreneurship, market dynamics, what makes this place great. And so I'm not saying this because I wanna sit on my high horse, I'm saying this right here and saying we have to start having much, much, much more honest conversations in our space because we're doing nobody any good. I had a meeting the other day where a person I invested in Lost his company, it's gone, it's over. It'll be shutting down next 15 days. He had one last ditch effort on a down round, didn't happen, it's over. By the way, get ready to read a shitload of articles about down rounds this summer. Anyway, over, dead, right? And he goes, I, you know, I'm ups- I, have a, I guess I, have, I mean, I have a sad face during the meeting because it's a sad event, right? Like, it's over. And he sees that I'm sad, he goes, oh Gary, don't worry. Like, I'll be fine, I, I learned a lot through this process. I said, motherfucker? I'm worried about the $150,000 you lost of mine. I'm not worried about you. Like, I gave you money and you fucking lost. Like this notion that this is play money or who cares, the VCs don't care. Like, I fucking care. I came from Zip. I lived in a studio apartment with eight family members the size of this stage. When I write a check, it hurts. I want you to win. I want you to do something. I'm not worried about your education process of the entrepreneurial journey, fucker. (laughs) Seriously. That meeting caught me off guard. He seems, like, we are broken. We are not having the right conversations. And I'm trying to give everybody in this room, anybody that watches my show, anybody that reads my book, a six to 12 month head start that is going to pay dividends for them if they either choose to do one of two things. Look in the mirror and recognize and figure out if they have the luxury of having self-awareness, is this maybe not what they're about? And number two, if it is, to figure out how that business makes money in the next six minutes. Thank you. My man. I'm gonna repeat these questions. We, do, we don't have a second mic to run, do we? Okay. Uh, all right, so you talk a lot about uh, Facebook ads like being the cheapest thing out there. Not, the, not the cheapest not thing, the cheapest. just the best, best value, yes. Best value. Um, so what do you think about like Instagram ads? And then I have a follow up to that. Um, you're telling people to do book reviews uh, on Instagram? Okay. Yes. Um, what do you think about like the long yeah. 
form content on So two things. Instagram not working the way I thought it was gonna work today, nine months ago, is the stunning, most stunning thing that's happening in tech for me. The fact that Facebook's back end isn't accurately working on deploying Instagram ads is stunning. Like what I mean by that is when I target 18 to 22 year old African American males on a piece of content on Instagram, 54 year old old white women shouldn't be showing up in my comments, but they are. And that doesn't happen on Facebook and it is on Instagram. So Instagram is not working yet. Like punchline, it's not consistently working and they're still trying to, because I think they're trying to figure out their cadence on how much they want to deploy there, right? Because it's such a golden goose. But I think Instagram, the reason I ask for people to review my book, not on Amazon, definitely not on Twitter, definitely not on their blog, the reason I asked everybody to, who, would, who would do it to review my book in long form on Instagram with a picture and 25 sentences on Instagram is two reasons. One, day trading attention. From an organic standpoint, the number one platform in the world right now is Instagram. So if, any, if you have 300 followers across the board, the best chance for me to get people to know what I want from you is on Instagram. It has the best depth from organic reach. Go ahead, I see so, one asking something. So from a long form content uh, standpoint, you found people engaging more? Yes, yeah, so that's part two. Okay. We do tons of testing at VaynerMedia at scale. We know that long form posts on Facebook and Instagram are over indexing short letter f- posts right now. Yet every single person on earth tells you that's not true. Go home tonight for kicks and giggles if you have a Facebook fan page, put a picture up and write 12 sentences in copy. Watch what happens to your organic reach. So like to me bro, the, the truth is when you day trade attention, no romance. For example, I know that seven minute videos on Facebook dominate. But everybody tells you to write short 30 second clips because it's micro content and social media and da 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 da. My man, we live in a world of headline readers. Somebody reads one person say something and it becomes the momentum. We don't have practitioners. The reason I maintain my personal brand is because I'm better at social media than anybody that works for me and we're the best social media agency in the world. Yes, Jeff. So uh, a lot of investors talk about user acquisition versus building a business. Of course, because the VC game is predicated on having one unicorn drive your entire fund and if you can get one company to really crush it because they became 200 million users, you pay for your whole thing. But the 99 other companies that you tell to do that go out of business. Building a business that makes money is usually a good idea when you're building a business. (laughs) I'm I'm into it. I think it's a good strategy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, a mic, awesome. Thank you, brother. You'll run around? Yeah. Very interesting talk. Um, Thank you, Paul. So you're talking about the, the oppression and the, the struggles of the founder. Yes. Um, I wonder how you deal with like sort of the self doubt. Like, the what? The self doubt. Or do you have the self doubt? Do I? Yeah. I don't. But that's because my mother hyperbolized the shit out of me and over like built my self esteem. In business, I don't have doubt. In swimming, huge doubt. I suck at swimming. I'm scared of swimming. Okay. So you, you, I don't. But I only don't in a very specific and narrow reason. And again, it's fun to have you Jeff here. Jeff is somebody I worked with um, very early on when we started Vayner. I just stay in my lane. Like this is back to self-awareness. I stay in my lane. I'm a salesman, I'm a business builder. I've done it my whole life. I was an F student at 13 and 14. My friend's parents told my friends not to hang out with me because I was a loser. I'm more successful than my entire graduating class combined. Like, like, This is because the market doesn't understand that people don't get it. You have to double down on your strengths and you have to punt your weaknesses. In America, there's billions of dollars made on selling you how to fix the things that you're not good at. It's a huge mistake. You need to figure out who you are and go all in. That's what I did. And so when you talk about business or marketing, when you talk about the New York Jets, and when you talk about wine, I've got nothing but bravado. Everything else, You should see me sitting around dinner tables right now talking about politics. The level of humility and the level of listening, you wouldn't expect from me because that's not how you're used to consuming me. I'm loud and proud because I only stay in my lane. Pay very close attention. I've got nine years of content on the internet now, maybe a little bit more. I've stayed very, very, very narrow. For me, it's lucky. The reason I've been able to kind of grow is my narrow thing is consumer behavior, which I can deploy against anything. So my narrow thing happens to be quite wide which allows me to play, it allows me to be a good investor, it allows me to run businesses, it allows me to be a personal brand, like it allows me to do things. 
But I don't waver from that, you know? Okay. I don't talk about building product. I've been around startups my whole life. I don't talk about product. And I'm pretty good at UI, UX. All my, I mean, Ed Williams and, and, and David Carr from Tumblr, they always like, give me good daps behind the scenes that I'm good at it because it's a little consumer, be, it's consumer behavioral kind of. So I, I, have, I have good feels. I used to know how to lay out my liquor store and that's how, why I did well in e-commerce early on. I just think about, all I do is deploy empathy at scale. I'm, I'm, I'm an empathy machine. That's what I do.